Except if you're heading to a nearby destination, it's always important to set off before the sun rises. The thing about traveling is that it's not always about the destination, but the little details on the way. As simple as watching the sunrise or the night lights. Located in the western region of Uganda, Fort Foto has been designated the tourism city of Uganda. It is the seat of both Kabare district and Toro kingdom. Fort Poto is located about 181 kilometers northwest of Mbarara, the largest city in the western region of Uganda, and this is approximately 296 kilometers by road west of Kampala, Uganda's capital and largest city. We took the Kampala Mubendi Highway on our way to Fort Poto. Like many other highways in Uganda, Zigot is one busy town where Mochomo is sold to travelers before they reach Mitiana town. Mitiana is one of the districts whose landmarks haven't really been paid attention to, her being the home of Chiinda Mitiana Diocese where some of the annually celebrated Ugandan martyrs were mercilessly killed on their way to Namugongo. Noa Mawagali, Kaizi Chiboka, Mayanja Kitogo, where some of the Catholic and Anglican matters respectively killed in Mitiana, and annual pilgrimage is carried out at the Naoki in the Mitiana Diocese every year to commemorate their martyrdom. Apart from the matters site, Mitiana is also home for one of the rarely mentioned freshwater lakes in Uganda. Lake Wamala. There are two ways to get to this lake through the fishing villages of Katiko and Gombe. We decided to take the Gombe Road, which is a 10 to 15 minutes drive off the Kampala Mwende Road. The lake is a great site for bird watching, endowed with a variety of seasonal weaver birds, pied kingfisher, and the African fish eagle. The main activity done in this area is fishing, even though the natives continue to be disrupted by the seasonal water weights. <laughs> Okay. 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 Mm. 
In the middle of the lake lays islands on which people live and sometimes leisure lovers dwell on weekends. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yes, <laughs> 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 Mm. <laughs> After the amazing tour to the freshwater lake, Lake Kwamala, we hit the road again and our next stop was Movende town. Mubende is one of the stop centers travelers stop by to buy refreshments and sometimes to refill their vehicles. It's quite a busy town. We hit the road again through the Kibale forest where we encountered a few curious baboons. Are we supposed to give them like banana? Yeah, not supposed to feed them. Gazing through the car windows to catch a glimpse of the curious travelers. Most of the tourist attractions in the tourism city Fort Porto are a result of volcanic eruptions that took place years ago from crater lakes to hot springs and queer shaped rocks. We wanted to check out the legendary Mabele Ganyina Mwelu site in Nyakasula village. So we are at Mabele Ganyina Mwelu. Time for a little history lesson today. We are going to be studying the legend of Ganyina uh, Mwelu. How did this place come about historically and geographically? <laughs> we are here again. I told you I'm called Ignatius Amoti. Okay. Amoti, you know, you always have to introduce yourself with a pet name because it's a respect here, someone to, to be called Amoti. Hey, uh, in Rotoro, people commonly talk about Empako. Mm -hmm. But uh, ladies and men, it differs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The men are not called Amoti. Uh, they are not called uh, empako. For men, it is. Um, for men, it is enemy. When they are asking, you say enemy ya, enemy yanga moti. Hey, but empako, it's for ladies. And uh, there is the way they give it to you, like they prepare oburo, uh, ferinda. Ferinda is you get the beans, you dry beans you put them in water they soften a bit you remove the the outer coat then boil the beans add some little ghee you know ghee yes, from the cows and then 
uh, you make a sauce. Cold so, food. yeah, we call it ferinda. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside of that sauce, you should have uh, what we call a subway. A yeah, eh, that's runyango. Runyango, they say shabwe. <laughs> for us, we say a subway. <laughs> eh, for, we don't use a lot of sha, sha. Mm -hmm. And we don't use sa. We don't have a lot of H. Eh. So, a subway, you, you just get a ghee. Uh, you, you boil uh, what you call it? some mushrooms, small, the small mushrooms, mm -hmm. and then get that water, mm -hmm. uh, the, the water you boiled with the mushroom, mm -hmm. and then you put it in a boiler, eh? and you keep turning from one bowl to another, two bowls, mm -hmm. and then the other water will turn to something milky. Okay. Yeah, that's a, a subway. Sometimes others add there some roasted meat, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, so that's, and then they will hold the hand of, uh, if you're old like now, they'll hold your hand, some people behind you, might be your parents and others, your friends, uh, laughing, feeling joy and happiness, rotating around the house, if you're a lady, three days, uh, three times, if you are a man, four times. But when you're a baby, they will carry you. And that will be either your mother or your father. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, they, that's uh, how they give you empower and they will confirm it. That's after birth. And that is after three days a man after birth. Four days a... Uh, sorry, four days a man after birth. Three days. And I did. That's empower then they confirm it to you. I think. No, 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 no. It can be given to a lady. The only pet names that are not given to ladies are Puli, Arali, Abala, Achari. Yeah. And a kick means someone who is so friendly. So the rest of the pet names can be either for a man or a, a woman. Yeah. So that's the pet name. We have 13 pet names. 12 can be given to ordinary people but there is the 13th it can't be given to an ordinary person what do i mean here it's for the king only when we are greeting these other pet names they say ota akiki ota woli ota teni but this one here it doesn't start with a like awoli akiki and all that this one starts with o and that's okali and when we are greeting, we don't say Ota. We say Zona Okali. Not standing like this, bending, or sometimes lying on the ground. He's a great person. And uh, that is uh, lying on the ground. And they don't just give it to him on normal occasion when he's walking or what. That name, they greet it to him when it is uh, a big function or in a special days. But normally when people meet him, they'd say, uh, they greet him Amoti. Amoti means a leader. Now, away from that, that's part of the culture in Toro here. But uh, the area where we are entering here, it's a small jungle, it's not a clear way. At some point it will go bending because some branches are a bit low. Sorry for the bending and uh, some points. There's these stinging natos, you know, the eating grass and burning. It's good you have long pants. Only with the open shoes, you have to be careful because some points there are some thorns. Yeah, thorns like that. So we are rotating around. In case of any viewing, taking photos, you do that as we move. It's a culture right from the past that people couldn't use the same way going same way coming back. Why? They used to do that to avoid enemies. Yeah, that's why that's why we are going to do that as we move. Inside here we have a waterfall called Nyakasura waterfalls. The word Nyakasura means something with a little salt. Akasura is little salt. And then Aksura is much salt. Around these areas of the Nyakasura village, there was uh, there were many streams. 
But people realize that whenever they could take their cows to drink on nice water, there is someone, uh, all the cows could cross all other streams and they go to one stream. So people wondered, what is it in that stream that all the cows cross other streams and they go to that? So when they tested the water, they realized the water was salty. They had some salty content. That's where the village borrows the name Nyakasura. Nyakasura village, Nyakasura school, Nyakasura stream, Nyakasura waterfalls and all that. So that's where the waterfall borrows the name Nyakasura as well. Yeah. So the Nyakasura waterfalls, the water comes from the mountains of Ruenzori. Mm -hmm. For you, you call them Ruenzori mountain. Mm -hmm. No, those are mountains of Ruenzori. This writing in the books, how we used to study that it is only in Kasese. No, the, the mountains are bigger than what we are uh, thinking. Because people think it is only in Kasese, but it is shared by Kabarole district, you call for Porto, yes. Bundubujo district, Ntoroko, Bunyangabu, and Kasese districts. Five. And calling them mountains of Ruenzori, there are many that makes one. If it was one, it wouldn't be having five different peaks. It has peaks like Nyakalengija, Karangura, Stanley, Margarita, and Nyabitaba. So those are five peaks that are on the mountain. So of Renzori. Yeah. So the water moves from the glaciers, flows here, hits the rock and forms about three and a half meters fall. And then from there, the water crosses down and goes to a river called Panga. Have you seen the river Panga? Yeah, when you're moving in Fort Porto. That's one of the longest rivers in Renzori sub-region here. It goes up to Kamwenge, it goes up to Chenjojo, and crosses back and ends in a lake called Albert. In Rotoro, we call it Mwitanzige. Yeah, Kill, <laughs> killing the locust. That's uh, uh, what we are talking about. Uh, the movement of the water to the falls and from the falls. Yeah. So we also have a cave. We call them Amaveri caves. Mm -hmm. The caves we have here, they are still active or they have rocks which are growing. Rocks grow. Mm -hmm. But people right from the past, they couldn't believe that a rock grows. Even to date, it's hard to convince some people that a rock yes. grows. But they grow. And uh, the way they grow, it's not that they just emerge and grow. They form chemically. Yeah. Forming chemically. All over these areas, we call them cast areas. Mm -hmm. And when we talk of cast area, people usually think about casting. Mm -hmm. No, this is a different word. It's K-A-R-S-T. Mm -hmm. Cast area, a land formation with the dissolving of soluble rocks. I'm giving you the chemical part of this area mm -hmm. or the geographical part okay. of the Maveri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, limestone being down here and it is porous allows water to percolate through or to go yeah. through its rocks like these ones. So when it rains and water hits the ground, it, it trickles through, picks up carbon dioxide and some minerals from the limestone. And then that water at the ceiling of the cave down in there will start dripping down in the form of milk substance. That is out of calcium carbonate. So the milk substance, that is believed to be the milk that forms under the caves and at one point it fed a boy who later became a king that is in Dahura. Mm. But that is calcite. So when that milk substance mm. comes in contact with the air, mm. it starts solidifying from the upper part of the cave. The length and thickness of the other one solidifying keeps expanding. Obuwanvunovugazi. Mm. Mm. In Rotoro we say obureiha. Mm. Novugazi. No Hey, they keep expanding from up, coming yeah. downwards. And when the water passes through the other milk substance, dripping on the ground, on that spot where the water hits, another one starts forming from the ground, yes. coming up, up. upwards. We call, they have names. I didn't want to go deeper because this is not school time. Yeah. Otherwise, if you were a student, I would brief you for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, now... They are given solutions and they have names. These rocks growing from up and down. Yes. The ones from up, we call them stalactites. Okay. And the ones from down, we call them stalagmites. 
So the when you check even the words there, at the beginning the words are similar, stala, stala. But when it reaches in the middle, there is C. The C stands, it's a solution we say stands for the ceiling. And then the stalag mites, the G stands for the ground. So when they keep forming, after a long period of time, they join. When they join, they form what we call the pillars. So the earth pillars are the most important fe uh, features in here. Because they are the ones which hold the roofs from sliding in that process, they make a wall. When they make a wall behind, a space remains there. That's what we are going to see on the other side near the waterfalls. And then from that side, we will continue moving to another cave, the second one. On that spot, you will observe carefully on the top of the roof. And that side, they are rocks which are special. What do I mean here? They stopped growing for a long period of time. And most of them, you'll see they appear in shape of uh, breasts. They look like breasts for the human beings. Yeah. <laughs> they are those ones in the shape of an adder of the cow. Yeah, I talked about that because people think we only have for the human beings. There is one big rock in the shape of an adder of the cow. In Utoro, we say Omahakukwente. They are those ones in the shape of a female dog. Two lines, two sharp lines in the shape of a, a female dog. In return, we say Omahakukwemba. Emba and the animals, they don't have a mabiri. Nyinamuiru was a princess, a beautiful princess. Once a slave, but later turned into a princess because his father was a slave and later turned into a king. Yeah. And his father was called, her father was called Bukuku. When you check around, the area where we are extending near the mountains the other side, we call it Bukuku sub County. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's not a name by mistake. It's a very ancient name and they named it after Bukuku. He was heading the security of Isaza, Bagenda, Waraga, Nyachikoto, Rugamba, Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> Those are names. Those are names of the. Uh, they are names of one king, Isaza, Waraga, Bagenda, Nyachikoto, Gamanawat. Five. They are names and titles. Yeah. So Isaza, the last king of the Batembuzi, who went to look for his lost cows under the caves, but people say under the ground. Bukuku used the advantage that he trusted him and left him with all the responsibilities since he was heading his security. Yeah. And you people you call Bukuku a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he was heading the security of his other. A gatekeeper is a small title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a big man. The general. Hey. So he sent his other with some guards who betrayed him and they killed him from there. But for him he claimed that his other disappeared from underground. Not knowing that before killing Isaza, Isaza had fallen in love with a beautiful maid called Nyamata and already had a son called Isimwa. So for a king to fall in love with a maid, that means this maid was really, really beautiful. That's why in our culture, these men, they will never give them that beautiful name, Nyamata. Mm -hmm. They say they don't look nice. <laughs> but we hear it. That name is only given to ladies that they look as nice as milk. This lady um, had given birth to a baby boy called Isimba. I hear in other languages like Uganda they say Simba. For us we say Isimba. Why do you remove the eye? Where do you want to take it? I will I'll ask them. I'll try and ask them. <laughs> now Isimba was raised as a servant uh, because it was a shaming the king to fall in love with the maid so they kept it as their secret. So Bukuku declared himself a king. Unfortunately, he didn't, he was not from the blood of the king and he was not from their lineage because the other ones, their clan was called Abagabu. Mm -hmm. For you, you call them our temples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the clan was called Abagabu. Abagabu. Mm -hmm. Not Abagabu. Mm -hmm. Abagabu. Yeah. Right from Kintu to Isaza. And there were 18 kings. Yeah. So. The Baranzi, those are the Bukuku and the Nyinamwirus came in, who were not supposed to be kings. Yes. Bukuku having one daughter, didn't have any kid as a boy. Mm. And by inheritance, it was just by men. Yes. So, gave the daughter 
a responsibility to look after all the slaves. In the past, they said, Abairu. So when we talk of slaves here, we are talking about the people. Hey, the people we are called slaves of the king. We no longer use those words. Instead, we say at least subjects. It's more polite. And instead of Abairu in return, we say Abatungu Abomkama. It put her on a higher level because most of these slaves started respecting this lady even more than Bukuku himself. Bukuku reached an extent of becoming jealous eh, to his own daughter. Thought one time the daughter will take over from him and uh, before he dies. So he started calling that my daughter there is the mother of a slave because each and every slave gives her a lot of uh, respect. That's where she borrows the name Nina. Mweru, locally translated as the mother of a slave. It put her in a higher level. Bukuku, being jealous to the daughter, consulted the fortune tellers about his future on the throne. And they told him, if you allow your daughter Nina Mweru to give birth to a baby boy, this boy will kill you and take over your throne. So Bukuku decided to come up with some ideas of avoiding the daughter to have a kid. And one of that was really horrible decided to cut off one of the daughter's breast mm. and remove off one of her eyes that she becomes ugly and no man can ever fall for her. Not, not knowing that this lady was old enough and she had fallen in love with someone already. And the person coincidentally was falling in love with was Isimbwa. You know Isimbwa? The sacred son of Isaza and Inyamata. That means he's a royal and she was already pregnant. So Bukuku to realize the daughter was pregnant, he really became mad and uh, when she gave birth to baby boy, Bukuku ordered the boy dead. But the people he ordered, these are people who were under slaves, the guards, mm -hmm. and they respected the princess a lot. So he, instead of killing the boy, he took him and threw him in the caves, which I believe to be the caves that we are going to visit mm -hmm. down here. When they threw him there, a man whose job was moving around to look for his clay soul called Urubumbi. Mm -hmm. Do you know what Urubumbi means? Someone who does crafts using clay soil, a potter. For you, you say Mubumbi. <laughs> when he was moving around and had a kid crying, he picked the boy up, took him to his home, raised him into his own son, but he didn't give him any name. Because in the past, they used to give names depending on the clan. With a reason, unlike nowadays, some people just throw names to kids. But when the boy was raised up and became very stubborn, his guardian gave him a name because of his behaviors being stubborn called Indahura. Mm. Indahura means someone provocative. We don't want to know Purahura. What can you do? Okay. And he could not let anybody, even people, the herdsmen from Bukuku, mm. to bring cows to drink on ice water from that stream where he was raised from, which is believed to be the stream from the falls crossing to Ribampanga. Mm. When they went and told Bukuku, Bukuku reaching at the stream and found the boy fighting the herdsman. Mm. He grabbed the spear from a herdsman, aimed at shooting the boy in the hora. Mm. This boy was very clever. He dodged the spear mm. to everyone's surprise. He quickly grabbed it back. He didn't want to know that this is a king. He banged him and he killed him. You see, the royal blood was already running yes. in his body, yeah. not knowing that he's a royal. So this king died and many people like Nyanamuiru wanted to know who is this more brave boy to kill the king? Where is he from? Where does he get the braveness to kill the king? And then the other guardian, Rubumbi the porter, had a lot to explain. Because he's the one who raised the boy up. In the process of explaining, the guards who threw the boy in the caves realized the same time they threw the boy in the caves is the same time he was picked from the, the caves. That's when they realized in Dahura was a royal. Some people like Nyinamuiru had very bad news mm. that the father is dead. But again, she gained hope to know that someone who killed the father following the story of Rumbi was her son and was still alive. That's why when something bad happens here, you will hear someone saying a proverb. It is very common and people use it a lot. Nguwewe, kibikirungi. Meaning? A bad scene. A blessing in this guys. If the other boy didn't kill Bukuku, Nyinamuiru would never know that the son was still alive. Something bad came out of something good came out of something bad. Kibikirungi 
ndahura na itabukuke blessing in this case for the other lady nyina where she lost and she gained at the same time now after two decades and a half the boy was made the king for him he said i will not follow the clan of my father because they were interfered by the clan of my mother so for me instead i have brought light into this darkness between two people and i come from the moon omwezi that's why he called his clan the twezi eh aba twezi actually for you you say twezi we say aba twezi na aba twezi kati there are people like me and you and they are still they they are these are descendants who are following the clan but people call them spirits you know they are people no more people like me and you okay why did people think they they were they had superpowers they were just clever compared to the past dynasty they introduced iron making they introduced games which need, needed you uh, a lot of mind to play like the board game you have heard of the board game yes. in ulturo we call it omweso so even we are going to see some bananas in this forest where they used to collect dempichi to play the board game yeah and uh, there are very huge bananas mm -hmm. in here so talking about the batwezi mm -hmm. they were very powerful they conquered many places some parts of eastern congo western kenya some parts of uh, southern sudan northern tanzania all those were territories of bunyoro kitara empire it was not a kingdom mm -hmm. it was an empire mm -hmm. and uh, later andahura died in busongora mm -hmm. Have you heard of Busongora before? Yes, I've been to Busongora. King. You've been there? Yes. Now that's Renzururu <laughs> at the moment. Mm. But that side in Busongora, a place called Wera. Mm. That's where he died from on his way moving, mm. looking for pastures and water for their animals. Imagine you have 200,000 cows. You cannot feed them in this one territory. Mm. You have to move looking that's for water. That's why for, for him, in that process of looking for water, all that, yeah water and pastures he could conquer those places he takes them away so he was clever and the batwezi couldn't move the same way going same way coming back yeah. that was not there why to avoid the enemies so whenever an enemy could be waiting on the same spot and doesn't see this person coming back would wonder how did this person know that he was waiting to harm him here so that's why they could say ah those are spirits they know what happens in the future so there is a lot of myth behind but we were demigods because they were very clever they are, they are close to god according to the things that they did because they were not did they done in the past dynasty and then the way they used to move and all that they couldn't move during the daytime because they had animals they had people and moving in the night they could go for a long distance that's one and another thing to escape predators to attack them like lions leopards and all that of course when we are talking about that there were the uh, the area was not modernized and there were no houses like this so people could do move in bush all over so they had to do that to avoid predators and uh, because the bush was all over there are no houses where they can escape from yeah so moving in the night predators lions leopards and all that are resting so they can have a chance to move through so that's why they could move during the night so for them they could keep shifting from one area to another they couldn't stay in one area so whenever they could converge in an area like this they will finish the whole district because they have a lot of cows they have a lot of maids and and guards so moving in the night they don't alert people to avoid enemies as well so whenever they couldn't alert people and people wake up and they find now anything that is around that place so people instead of saying these people have gone they say they have done what they have disappeared okay. so rumors went all over that these people keeps disappearing yeah because you wake up they were there in the morning you come they are not there and people didn't expect them to move in the night so that's why that's the myth ah which was used to disappear and reappear so how did they disappear for real over they are still there that no even the last king of the batwezi for him to to move 
he ran away because he was overpowered by the babito that is his ngoma rukidi mpuga so he ran away because he was overpowered and uh, they didn't kill him he just ran in the sides of like albert mitanzige and when a king does something like that we say umkama ya goromoire he didn't die but he if he had uh, and ran away uh, when you say if he had and ran away that is uh, disrespecting a king at least you say umkama ya goromoire he moved that is wamara you say wamala for us we say wamara <laughs> yeah wamara R A at the end wamara came in rule after the guardian uh, or someone whom they put up as a caretaker when Indahora died that is mulindwa and then wamara ruled for him he went back and sat he didn't move like his father it was easier for the people who originated from the upper part of the country from a very big tree called the bito tree headed by isingoma rukidi mpuga supported by the arm of the luo that's why when the wazungu came they included the luo in their rule that's why they call them the luo bito dynasty but originating from the other big tree which could provide them a shelter people call them ngwabo babito eh hey, they are babito and uh, they come from the other big tree that's where the clan starts from and right from the 14th century up to today they are the ones who are in rule the babito and babito kati princes and princesses so i have gone far to that the reason why i said all that story it was drawing us closer to what we we're going to see as a mabedi people have that belief or that mythological understanding great right from the past that when the boy was raised around the cave areas he used the advantage of the rocks growing from up and put them in shape of breasts using the experience from his guardian the potter rumbi and these rocks remember they contain lime put them in shape of breast why in remembrance of what was done to his father or to his mother cutting off her breast that's why people call them that they are maberi of the other lady nina mwiru but people didn't live alone they respected cows and they we even say in the mtu language you say bantu the muntu language that when you remove a letter s from sente it remains ente so they depended from the animal which used to bring a lot of income and give it the word money so ente and sente they move together they never separate and you couldn't own a farm of the cows without dogs because the dogs worked as a security that's why down here we are going to see another rock big rock that was put up to symbolize cows and another two lines in the shape of a female dog that's the art of what we are going to see as amabere kanye namuiru So I went I conquered um from the legendary Amabele Ganyana Mill Caves it's quite a breathtaking sight you should see it to believe it but it's in Fort Porto the legendary city of love